Don't forget to like and, and subscribe. <laughs> All right, guys. What's up, Mr. Two Six? Checking back in. It's been a while, uh, but now that the uh, new type um, bracket challenge, uh, all the submissions should be in for that. I thought it was time for me to go over what it was that I did and my thinking behind it. So first of all, in my first video where I explained. Uh, the kits I was gonna use and all that stuff. Here's my little my little Tupperware with all the extra parts that I have from the three: the flight type, a black alto, and a red Porter Nova. And then not, not to mention the two weapons uh, packs and the uh, the option parts uh, for both. So that was that. So I knew from the beginning I wanted something that was fast or that looked fast um, one thing uh, led to another I was putting something together where I was gonna use the wings from the flight type and in my mind it just didn't look right because uh, by their design wings create drag so I didn't want that I wanted something that just looked fast and then the more I kept thinking and thinking and thinking, I had been watching um, Wing at that at that time, and I was like, man, the tall geese is perfect. That was my base, the tall geese. And why? Because of its uh, super uh, vernier uh, system. You know, the super dope, fast ass backpack he has on his back. Yeah, that. So, so the wheels started turning. I was like, okay. I started push, pu uh, kept bashing pieces together, trying to see what fits, how I can make that. And eventually, it got to a point that I was at. I had something that I liked. So, next was colors. Now, this is where I got hung up the most, and it probably took me about a month going back and forth, back and forth. Uh, should I? Should I spray paint? Should I uh, brush paint? Paint with the brush? Uh, should I use the Gundam markers? What do I do? And then for about a couple weeks, I was on the brush painting uh, bandwagon. And then on one of Zaku Aurelius's um, live builds, I decided, I just asked the question, what do you recommend for a first timer? Because I haven't painted, painted any model in 20 something years. So he was like, no, just go with, uh, he recommended spray paint. So I said, okay. So now, what color? <laughs> that was my dilemma. So I kept just going back and forth, back and forth, um, color on colors. And eventually I was like, you know what? This thing is never going to get done. I went on Amazon. Uh, I bought every, uh, Tamiya color, um, spray paint that I can find that was prime because I wanted it fast so I could start and I ended up buying actually let me show you guys so I ended up buying two four six eight yeah eight different colors mind you and these were all prime so I ended up well not didn't really work out but okay so let's start. So first I was like, oh, bright red, TS49. Uh, TS Sounds good. Zoom in there, there we go. TS49, which actually I didn't even use. Uh, Gunmetal. The one I used the most. Oh, uh, there's actually two of them here that I ran dry. Gunmetal. So it's TS38. I should have bought another one of these. Uh, German Gray, I use very little of. Just to te for testing. This French blue, I love the color. TS10, absolutely love this color. Come on, focus in, focus in. Come on, you schmuck. Ah, whatever. TS10, absolutely love this color. Love it. Next was orange, uh, TS12. All right, a little bit just for testing. And then I got the TS-15, just the regular blue. 
uh, TS26, which is, which is a pure white, which that's used. And then finally, TS74, which is a clear red. And this one's pretty much almost done. I went through a whole can, a large can of the surface primer, the Tamiya Fine surface primer. Went through the whole thing. So I started testing colors, I started testing colors. Okay, what do I like? Um, there's a bunch of different things. I ended up getting one of the SD EX standard kits that I had laying around uh, and put it together. Um, and I decided, you know what, let me get that and let me just start painting putting color combinations together let me see what I can get try to do some like the triangle camo that night and that's what average builder put uh, did a little tutorial on I was trying things um, for example this right here because I knew I wanted a purple some type of purple and you guys might not know this, but I used to work at uh, in Home Depot in the paint department. So I did mix a lot of paint. I know what colors go with what to make what. And some of this is common sense. So this right here, this maroon, a gorgeous color, is actually the French blue with the clear red. That's that color combination. It's a wine, uh, cabaret wine color it's it's it is a beautiful color beautiful so then i started I, I kept experimenting i like this was the blue by itself the ts15 blue by itself again this is a nice blue it's like a it teeters in between a a navy and like a bright blue so it's a very nice middle of the road color and then one of the colors I knew for sure was gonna be on this on my submission was this was this color right here I wanted something bright bright and what this color combination is right here is that is the white with the clear red and that was money this is exactly what I was looking for something super bright in your face um, yeah and I just I just love like the dark the dark colors with the with the bright uh, like tidbits to to contrast against each other so not being satisfied with the darkness of this color the French blue with the clear red I went a shade darker and this is a color I really 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 wanted and this was the blue the TS 15 with the clear red again and this thing I mean man it's sexy I don't even know if the camera could pick it up but it is I don't know how to explain this color oh I know how to it's like um, cherry coke, cherry coke or Dr Pepper. It has like that. It's a it. It kind of teeters in between a brownish red that's just super dark and more red than brown, but it just looks gorgeous. And then this was the combination I was shooting for, basically. Oh, awesome. So then, once I got my colors down, started painting. Took the kit apart, started painting. First I did the frame, uh, the inner frame or what, whatever it is, the joint parts, and the gun metal. And I was almost done, almost done. And then, the paint was done. And I got scared because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I couldn't get the paint anywhere in time. Um, the paint was no longer available on Prime, most of them. If they were Prime, they were not two days. They were a week uh, in, 
uh, expected delivery date. So that was out of the question. There's a local hobby shop that when the whole coronavirus started, they were doing uh, uh, deliver, uh, not delivery, um, online order pickups if you lived uh, local, and they had all the colors I needed. So when I call them, they're like, yeah, no, we're just shipping the stuff now. Like, no. So in my first, not frustration, because you know, it was what it was. I dealt with what I had and I just moved on because I, I, I wanted to get this done and I, and I didn't want to leave it just lingering there. So what other place can you go and buy uh, spray paint? Lowe's, Home Depot, probably Ace Hardware. So I went to Home Depot. <laughs> I went to Home Depot. And what did I do? So I ended up getting navy blue. And this is a paint and primer one. I got two cans of this and this thing is still full. Uh, and it's a glossy uh, finish, which I don't care for. But I, that eliminates my primer problem because I ran out of primer too. Mind you, this, that primer was only used on this project. And then since I had the hopes of doing the same, same-ish color, this a dark maroon purplish color, I got, uh, it's called Claret Wine. And my idea was, uh, I know these, these spray a lot thicker than the hobby paints, so I was paying, painting them at a distance. So this, my idea was that this would be the base and this would be from far away just to get like, like specks basically just to spray it so it just catches the dust the parts catch the dust and what i ended up getting when i did that i was actually happy with come on now right, you stay on it's right here i was actually actually came out really good i was surprised the problem was is that I couldn't guarantee that every part I painted was going to come out like this. That was a problem. So at the end of the day, I just decided, you know what, we're going to play it safe. I did it all with the navy blue. I still have my dark color and my bright color to contrast because I was still going with that red. I, I, I was good on the paint because there wasn't much I was painting uh, with that color combination. The, the blue was more important. So, started painting. <laughs> this paint starts drying. <coughs> Excuse me. And I didn't see that, that this this issue that much with the with the hobby paints, but I've seen it before with uh, home improvement paint or whatever you want to call it, uh, commercial spray paint. When it starts to dry, if, if you didn't put enough paint, what ends up happening is that as it starts drying, you start seeing like these sandpapery um, finish. I don't know, I don't know what you would call that or, or, or what that is. And this was all over pretty much the all of the outer parts. The entire armor is basically this color. So anyways, sorry about that. So I started getting that sandpapery, orange peel looking uh, finish. And I was freaking out. I was like, great. I did buy some clear uh, spray paint from Home Depot. I tried it and I didn't care for it. So what ended up saving me, or this project, was actually this guy right here. Mr. Hobby. Super clear, matte. It completely I don't know if you would say fix, but it saved my ass. <laughs> Cause this thing was gonna be hideous. I mean, the finish was gonna be terrible. And this thing came in and saved the day. I highly recommend this right here. Highly. Um, I was kind of hesitant because of the, the type of paint. I didn't know how it would mix with the commercial spray paint. Luckily though, everything was good. 
So, uh, <clears throat> so going back to the kit, I got it all done. I'm all painted up, and because of the color, I decided to do one thing. So this was blue. We've been playing a lot of Sonic. We've been watching a lot of Sonic. The girls are here every day because they're not at school. So I was like, you know what? It would be pretty cool if I put if I painted the feet of this kit like the Sonic shoes. And that's what I did. And it came out perfect. So without further ado, here we go. Alright guys, so really quick, let's go over what parts make up what on this. So, starting from the head, we basically have the Alto Commander uh, faceplate, I guess you could call it. Coming down to the chest, we have the Porta Nova Commander, that chest plate, which I like because I think it matches the angle, the V from the chest matches the angle of the V-fin on the head which I liked and then we're also running the right shoulder from the Porta Nova commander um, and that was one of the things I liked about this design was the asymmetrical look uh, not only in color but at least in that part that's the only part that's asymmetrical as far as uh, shape is concerned uh, working our way down forearms oh the left shoulder is just a standard alto shoulder the two the two arms uh i guess i guess you could call it the bicep forearm and hand area are all from the porta nova the midsection the the gut and the i guess where that belt line that's 
from the Porta Nova as well. Uh, going down to where the skirt armor would be, that would also be the Porta Nova. The thighs are from the standard Porta Nova, and the knee, the kneecaps are from the standard Porta Nova. The shins, calf area, that's from the flight type, and then the the feet are from the flight type as well. Now, coming over to some of the accessories, let's start on the backpack. So the backpack is a mix of flight type stuff, and it's also a mix of option backpack number two. So that's how I, I just kind of put things together to see how I could get things together. The actual boosters on the backpack that I created are actually the feet that come with the flight type, that go with the flight type. So they kind of look like chicken feet. So just went with it, changed the position. I thought it looked cool look, like the way I did it. And uh, that's pretty much that. The also from option backpack two i use the uh the tanks reserve tanks booster tanks whatever you want to call them the white thingies hanging out the back so i just implemented that extra fuel nitrous whatever you want to call it uh i don't know i just thought it looked cool so uh so there's that there's also some option backpack one things going on in that backpack mostly in the center of that that center fin piece and uh, as far as the weapons the flight type the, the the weapon that's mounted on the elbow that comes from the flight type it's like some sort of medium ranged beam rifle and then the the submachine gun is the standard that comes with the alto and uh and then i did just a mishmash type of deal for the sword so i basically went with something that was three bladed so it could be used in any direction so he could punch with it basically which is where the axe portion is uh you have the shorter blade um to catch people off guard and then you obviously have the traditional long blade and uh, that was pretty much it. That was the the gist of this build. And then um, also, if you look at the weapon really quick, on the edge of all the blades, I just took uh, my Gundam marker and I just did like a red line all the way through. So uh, that's pretty much it. This is my uh, bracket challenge entry. And it's under the name uh, silent c y l e n t and uh let me know what you guys think i, I look forward to hearing some constructive criticism or just cr criticism <laughs> uh in general you know i could take it that's all good and uh, that's pretty much it so uh thank you for tuning in and uh don't forget to like and like and subscribe <laughs> until next time guys Peace.